Today, I want to show you my process for using Mass AI at scale, basically as a testing ground, and then improving and optimizing that content in the correct way to then hit page one of Google. Now, the beauty of this method is it can be used at a large scale. If you've got a big website where you've got big industry and you want to target loads of different keywords, but you don't know which of those are really going to perform. Before we go any further, I've got a load of resources for you, including our AI footprints document, the keywords to watch out for that commonly come out of AI tools. Just go to the Ranking Revelations newsletter and you can sign up absolutely free there. And there's a load of resources in the welcome email delivered automatically. I've just been adding to that for a long period of time now. So a lot of value there. But while we're on SEO, Jesus, quite a few people have said, why is it you're a big SEO guy and yet your website's crap? And I completely agree with you. Actually, quite a lot of SEO consultants do have pretty bad websites. And it took me a while to fully appreciate that that's because Generally, when you're focused on your clients, your own websites, your personal brand website often gets deprioritized. It's that classic of the busman's holiday, at least that's what we talk about in the UK, where you tend to not give yourself the benefits of the service that you deliver to others all day. People talk about how barbers' children have terrible haircuts. I can assure you, my dad is not a barber as much as you might have thought so. But to tell you honestly, the main reason is because there's quite a convoluted route to SEO Jesus. So basically, it's the distraction that I'm always warning people against. I was the absolute victim of not taking my own advice. Because having operated niche sites for years, actually starting my link building agency a couple of years ago, was very much just a side hustle. I already had my team doing all this for my site. So I thought, why not open up to a few clients? Given that people were asking me, saying, your process sounds great. Can you do it for my website? So I created this little brand. I went with supply.com, S-E-R-P-P-L-Y because as most of you watching this channel will know, we talk about SERPs as search engine results page. So I thought this was very witty, very startup-y, kind of like the, the classic misspelling of a, of a word, a bit like Tinder, something like that, flicker. So I thought this looked really nice and techy and Silicon Valley-ish, but quite quickly found that was a terrible idea because of course, every time I'm having to explain if someone wants the URL, I'm saying, yes, it's SERPly, it's S-E-R-P-P-L-Y. Uh, you get it, you get it. And basically, they just think I can't spell because as an SEO, your main clients are not fully versed in the SEO jargon. But meanwhile, I started specializing in high ticket coaches because I was always looking for what's the maximum ROI I could get for SEO? What are the most expensive products I could possibly sell with SEO? And that's why I specialized in high ticket coaching, thinking these people are selling $10,000, $20,000 coaching programs and their SEO is terrible. So I even wrote a book on it, and that's when I started the Power Lever Method. So I decided to rebuild my agency around this framework of the Power Lever Method of SEO for coaches. But that whole market wasn't really a great fit, so it worked a little bit, but not great. But then I blew up on YouTube and just started getting general SEO clients in loads of different industries. Now, it's about 18 months ago in October 2022, when... I was at a conference in Bangkok on a rooftop bar and someone said to me quite calmly, we'd only just met. He said, why don't you do the SEO Jesus thing? But fine, the .com was available, so I grabbed it. And over time, I've been telling people about this funny story and everyone goes, ah, oh, that's amazing. You've got to go for that. Make that your brand. So eventually with YouTube success, I thought, fine, there's been off the power lever method because I'm no longer solely focused on coaches. Surply never actually got off the ground, but SEO Jesus, this is working. This would be a great place to funnel my YouTube audience. But this basically meant in the space of about two years, I've been through three different brands and therefore got none of them off the ground. So it's that classic explore exploit thing where we always say you want to go deep rather than wide. The biggest mistake most young businesses make is to try and go from idea to idea to idea and never actually committing to one of them. So that's exactly the mistake I made. So that is why people are now going to my site saying, not only does it not look great, but it's not really ranking well either. And that's because it's a new site. We had this mad scramble over the last six months since the rebranding to try and get this into a decent state. But of course, we weren't going to stick with that. We always wanted to grow it over time. Now you'll notice seojesus.com I've got a domain rating of 32. Now, part of the reason for that, I've explained this in previous videos, is basically because I had all these separate agency websites I'd built, which also has quite some domain rating because I was still doing my own PR and publicity at the time, they were collecting lots of backlinks. So surply.com is 29, Power Lever Method was 32. So to try and get some of that power across to SEO Jesus, I basically use these as a PBM. 
I gave myself homepage backlinks on each of these agency sites. Somewhere on here, I've got SEO Jesus here. And so that meant I was immediately able to push SEO Jesus up to a high domain rating using my existing brands, plus the existing PR and exposure I'm currently getting. Just an example, I'm speaking at Carl Broadbent's affiliate gathering in York in about three weeks time. And I managed to take over his website. So that's given myself a good link. So I'm up there with headliners with Mad Singers, also one of the sponsors. So that's going to be a really good event. So hopefully see you there. But I also got the backlink from it. This is a DR30 website. So I inherited more power from that site. So my team have been nagging me for a long time saying, come on, we've got this really high domain rating now. So we should really get some of our content ranking. Now in December, I just went into auto blogging AI. This is when I was doing a lot of testing in this and just blasted out a hundred pages or so of content around SEO, especially commercial terms. So SEO for certain niches. Now, as you may well know, a lot of these belt tools that can work, but it's not always perfect. And it's taken a long time for that content to actually get moving and get off the ground. But once you start seeing some of these pages starting to rank, maybe around 40, 50, 60, that's when you know you're onto a winner. Now, this is my advice for everyone that when you have your keyword list, only about 20% of your content is going to give you 80% of your traffic. And would it be great if you could find out which keywords are actually going to deliver you that 80% of your traffic? Pretty much every website I audit has a few pages delivering most of the traffic and then a load of duds. If only there was a way to actually work out what the duds are going to be so you can allocate your effort accordingly. That's why I always say with my link building agency that when we start with a client, we like to identify three to four focus pages. Uh, ideally, those are already ranking well because the idea is if you're already at the bottom of page one for a good keyword, then the chances are if you start building backlinks to that page, you're going to compound that existing success and push it higher up. And by doing three to four, you can really identify the real winners and then kill off the losers and put more of that budget into the winners, ultimately compound your success. But how does this happen with AI content? Well, when you blast out 100 pages of AI content, you can start to see which of those pages are starting to get traction. And that's exactly what happened with our SEO for adult e-commerce page. There's always this irony, despite the brand name SEO Jesus, we seem to do really well in the adult niche, cannabis, guns, all those slightly shadier gray hat niches will somehow manage to end up with a lot of clients and a lot of experience in working with those niches. Now, you notice I mentioned that when you have this AI content aging in the background and maturing over time, it can often sit quite happily anywhere between position 20 and position 60, not giving you traffic, but giving you a sign that you're kind of on the right track. So how is it that for adult e-commerce SEO, we're at position five on page one? Well, that's because once we identified that this was doing quite well, we went in and improved it. We've really upgraded our writing team in-house at SEO Jesus, partly through better utilizing South Africa. Loads of colleagues in the industry have said the same thing, that although getting staff from the Philippines is great, as is traditional, there are certain countries where there've been really good recruiting grounds for years for SEO, but lately people are getting a lot of success with South Africa. The currency is very low at the moment, so you can actually get really good talent quite cheaply. And so for that reason, we've really leveled up our writing ability We've got people who have got legal training and all sorts of academic experience now writing for us. And so because of that, we're able to improve our AI content significantly. So if I actually open up this page, you can see this was published 1st of December, 2023. So we're into that three to six month bracket that I also always talk about that when you publish a page, it takes you three to six months to really see any traction from it. And that is the joy of using bulk AI. You can just complete your website as soon as you launch it and then come back in three to six months and see what's working. But now if I scroll down, you can clearly see how this has been rewritten and improved by our team. So we go straight in with the adult e-commerce industry is booming. That's that's not chat GPT. That's not the nice, woolly, friendly, in the vast digital landscape, the world of adult e-commerce SEO is essential. And then we go straight in with data. According to the Global Adult Entertainment Market Report 2024, the current market size is a staggering $51.8 billion with these projections. The stats above mean one thing, opportunities. So you can already feel not only are we getting uh, data and insights that are beyond standard AI training data, we're also getting some real copywriting. You're feeling sucked into the article with a hook. So as we can scroll down, this is all optimized with Surfer, of course. So we're still using our correlational tools and the, the underlying draft will still be ChatGPT based, but the point is we're humanizing it. We're trying to get these improvements, expert insights and data further in. And this is why I say to all my clients that 
As part of our link building service, we will generally improve your existing content to make sure those backlinks have the best impact possible. And that tends to be a draft using Surfer, but you still need to go in and give it your final gloss, your own spin. So it completes all the Surfer requirements. Most businesses still aren't using correlational tools like Surfer. You'll still find a lot of big enterprises are just using the, the old write 500 commit words and use the keyword five times. So we try and complete that Surfer draft for them. But we really do recommend having a, a subject matter expert go in and improve it from there once you start getting these rankings and start getting traffic. So in this case, this blog post keeps referring back to my videos and using specific sound bites from my videos. So think of backlinks as votes of confidence from other websites. Now, generally I say Google still can't detect or tell AI content, but obviously it's getting better. And we know that was specifically targeted in the recent March update. Now, what I really noticed with this particular case study was this jumped up really quickly. We can see that from the history graph. So anytime you want to see how your website is performing for a particular keyword, you can go into your keywords report in Ahrefs, go and find that keyword in your keyword report. And then if you come over to the right, there's this little graph symbol. And what that will do is show you exactly how that keyword or how your website has ranked that keyword over a period of time. So in this case, we can see generally with AI content, when you first blast it out, it does tend to rank very well and then it dies off. And we've always seen this even before AI. Generally, Google does give you a little boost for recent fresh content, but then you've got to sort of earn your way back up again, three to six months down the line. So first of all, this page ranked at position 18 for adult e-commerce SEO, and then disappeared pretty much entirely. And not a lot has happened since then until if we come now to the 19th of April, it immediately jumped up to position five. So I think it's pretty clear in this case that while Google can't detect AI content, it does seem to get, be getting better at detecting really expert level content. So it really does feel like a magic switch where having gone into this AI draft, which does have age and authority, and it has ranks in Google before, by improving and optimizing it with an expert human, suddenly it's jumped up to page one, position five. So this really is an iterative process. The other day I launched a video on my minimum viable content process where I recommend whatever website you're starting, start with a basic AI draft just to see what works. In my case, I've got about 50 insurance websites where we have a, a chat GBT homepage on each one. Still optimized with Surfer, still using all the correct entities, but we're really not going into the weeds to make it the best page on the internet. So we're just keeping that quick and dirty. But then of those 50, if 10 start showing signs of actually performing, then we can go in and improve it. And this is the result we're seeing. You improve an old AI draft and it's instant page one rankings. So is AI SEO dead? Absolutely not at all, but you've got to use it for what it is a tool. Don't expect to just use a bulk AI tool and instantly get finished content. Aside from anything to do with rankings, you've also got this issue of human conversion. I think humans are going to get better and better at detecting a, a fluffy AI piece of content and clicking the back button and really prioritizing content that really top loads the article with that kind of data, insight, and expertise. So what should you do? Absolutely use these kinds of AI tools to start off with. But three to six months later, review what's actually working and then improve those pages, preferably with an expert. This is why I've always said ChatGPT works. You can get rankings with it and that's all fine. But when you start getting those rankings, make sure that if you get audited by Google, it actually looks like good content and your reward for well, that will be better dwell time on the page. Your better user experience will therefore push you up the rankings further because Google is monitoring those metrics, how long people are actually spending on your page and how many are just clicking the back button, but also not forgetting sales copy. So ultimately it's not about getting traffic or rankings. It's about selling the user. So it's also at this human optimization stage that you can turn an article of information because as we know, Google really likes information heavy websites, but turning that into a real sales message and getting that user to take action and buy from you. The AI tools are really good, but I think it's going to be quite a while before these kinds of AI tools can spit out a website that's actually really good quality content and continues to sell the user on your product. But in terms of iteration, it's easier than ever. Do your 100, 200 articles, work out what works, and then go hard on really improving and optimizing those winners.